Hey, welcome to Surviving Mars. So, this is a game that came out not too long ago. It was May 31st, I believe. And it's a uh, world building simulator, basically, on a semi familiar ground. You're not building on Earth, you're building on Mars, obviously. It's a game by Hamimont Games, and it's distributed by Paradox Interactive, I believe. I'll put a link to it in the Steam store down below. Uh, I've heard great things about this. I actually got it a while ago and unfortunately was not able to play it because my computer couldn't handle it. So definitely had to wait until I had a system that could take it in order to play it. So we are going to do a new game. I'm gonna... You know what? Let's, 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 let's go back. All right, can I go back? Let's make this episode the tutorial episode. Let's do the tutorials because I like to do the tutorials so we know what we're doing and you have an idea what's going on. And it gives me a chance to break it up a little bit, see how things pan out in the game. So let's, um, let's make this episode the tutorial episode. And we're gonna do all of them probably because I don't think they're gonna take that long. And then tomorrow we'll actually start into the actual game. So let's do the basics. Basically the basics. Welcome to Mars. Welcome to Mars. So that was creepy road. In this exercise, you'll learn how to gather basic resources from the Martian surface, how to construct a small base, and how to refuel the rocket in order to send it back to Earth. Let's get started. Achievements are disabled during all tutorials. Hints such as this one will appear throughout the training process, giving useful information on how to advance in your current tasks. Dismiss the task. You need to master the camera controls and familiarize yourself with the terrain around the prospective colony site. WASD. Okay. Now it's time to land your first rocket. Proceed by selecting the pinned icon representing the rocket that is currently in orbit around Mars. Land the rocket. With the rocket selected, designate a landing site on the indicated location. Okay. We've designated our landing site. And our rocket is a landing. Looks like a... Looks like a great white. That's pretty funny. Oh, look. And we have touched down. The rocket has landed on Mars. It carries drones, remotely controlled robots, which constitute your construction and resource gathering workforce. Gathering basic resources for building construction is one of the first things our Martian base needs. Place a metal deposit so the drones begin automatically bringing metals from the scattered surface deposits nearby. Gather five metals in a metal depot. So we have to build a metal depot. Depot. Metal. Can you put it right there? Accelerate so they gather resources. Okay, so they go out there and they pick them up. And they zoom over and drop them off. Okay, so that tells what kind of depot it is. And then it, they just pick stuff up. I could see how many metals Our there are. carries valuable resources that will be essential for the construction and maintenance of the colony. Initially, it's best to designate a universal depot so the drones have a place to store them. Universal depot sounds better than a metal depot. Along with metals, concrete is the other vital basic construction resource. Concrete extractor building must be placed over a concrete deposit. Look for a patch of yellow terrain 
your landing site. So concrete apparently grows naturally. I wonder it comes from trees. Maximize the yellow terrain covered by the work area. The concrete extractor is good practice. This way the extractor will produce more concrete in the long run. Build menu, production, concrete extractor. Objects are blocking construction. Well done. Now observe how the drones will carry all the resources to the site and then construct the concrete extractor. Remember that construction will finish more quickly on the fastest game speed. Spin up and down in the ship, filling up the universal, building the concrete harvester so we can harvest some wild concrete oh, I like the shadow that is nice it's like our ship is some sort of sundial concrete extractors take a while to build oh it's neat it kind of builds it up like a shield like most buildings the concrete extractor needs power in order to operate Having a reliable electrical grid and supply is essential for the success of the colony. Sterling generators are excellent power sources, but they are too complex to be built on Mars during the early stages of colonization effort. That's why we ship them from Earth partially assembled in prefabs. Prefabs do not require any resources, only drones to unpack and assemble them. We're providing you with a Sterling generator prefab. Okay, so I guess we do it the same way. Connect the Sterling generator and the concrete extractor using a power cable from the build menu to power up the extractor. Power cable. Oh, it cancels it. Okay, and they build the little cable. Everything's connected. Now it's running. Waste rock is a byproduct of all extractors and is best stored at designated locations. This way you can ensure that it will not be in the way of future construction. The amount of waste rock per resource extracted depends on the grade of the resource deposit. You can select a resource deposit to view its grade and the amount of resources remaining in it. Place a dumping site in the concrete depot. Store the extracted concrete. So we're going to need... Depot. Concrete depot. Put it right there. We're going to need a dumping site. Drones will pick pending tasks on their own within the range of the drone controllers they are assigned to. Currently all drones are assigned to the rocket. The rocket is selected. The work range of all the drones assigned will be visualized. If the rocket takes off, all the drones will need another controller. Build a drone hub and make sure... Where are we? can we go? That's pretty far. Drone hub. Power cable. That's kind of a neat way to collect things. Is it going to wipe out the power cable when it comes over here, though? Picking up the little junk, dropping it off. Drones run on batteries that have to be recharged periodically. Every drone hub has two recharge stations built in, but you might need additional ones as the colony spreads out. 
Constructing research, recharge stations, especially along areas with heavy drone activity, will provide vital in maintaining an efficient workforce. Recharge. There's a lot to build. We'll put it on the other side. And then we'll make a cable connection. Power cable. Wow, you just slap that down. Online. Maintaining a steady supply chain between Earth and Mars is essential, especially during the early colonization stages. Every rocket has enough fuel for a one-way trip to Mars and has to be refueled on site so it can return to Earth and be reused. Fuel is produced in a fuel refinery. To set up the production chain, we'll also need water. So a moisture evaporator and a fuel refinery. Moisture evaporator and then we'll build a fuel refinery. Put the refinery over here. And they need power, so we'll do power cables. We'll do all the power cables at once. that icon mean we don't have sufficient power for all the buildings in the colony luckily we have an extra sterling generator prefab we could use build a new sterling generator along the power network okay power so we'll just have to plop down another one A system of pipes is used to deliver resources such as water and air where they are needed. Probably would have been better to build those closer together if I didn't know they needed pipes. Connect the moisture vapor moisture vapor evaporator to the fuel refinery with pipes. This is some in-depth stuff. Okay. So we'll go down here. Little robots do some work. Fuel production is now underway, and the drones will begin to deliver the fuel to the rocket. View speed controls increase game speed, so the rocket refills faster. For the purposes of tutorial simulation, the rocket needs far less fuel, five, than it would during a normal playthrough, 60. Refuel the rocket. One. Let's just do drone hub. What else can I build? Decorations, hanging gardens, space bar. Who knows I can build? Dumping site. Pretty restrictive. Concrete extractor, fuel refinery. Our switch. Launch. And the, oh, those poor droids. 
they're right in the launch zone. Congratulations. You have finished the first tutorial. Yay! First tutorial done. Learn how to set up a basic outpost, gather resources, using rockets, bring additional supplies from Earth. Got it. I'm down with this. Tutorial Welcome, 2. Welcome, Commander. In this training exercise, you will get acquainted with one of your most valuable tools. Rovers. Rovers are vehicles with a variety of useful functions, like transporting resources, commanding drones, and analyzing anomalies. You'll have direct control over all rovers in the colony. Select the RC transport and move it to the designated area. RC now let's transport. try moving around. Rovers consume battery power while operational. From time to time, you'll have to recharge their batteries. If a command that the rover executes gradually depletes its battery to recharge it, you must simply move the vehicle closer to a power cable. The rover will draw power from the power network, so expect a spike in power consumption. Move the RC transfer next to a cable and wait until it is completely satis charged. There's our capacity. So 59%. speed. There we go. The RC transport can load and carry resources around the map. Let's use it to refuel the nearby rocket. Use the RC transport to load fuel from the fuel depot in the base and unload it close to the rocket so the drones can load it into the rocket. Drones can also take resources directly from the RC transport if they need them. However, unloading the resources is quicker and will free up the RC transport for other tasks. Okay, so let me take that, go over here, load the resources. Yeah, it loads up pretty quick. Now order the RC transport to unload the fuel next to the rocket. We're away. Oh, rocket, did we didn't park very close to where we were trying to be, did we? Unload. Wait for the drone spring fuel inside the rocket, then select the rocket. Did it go back for more? Where did it go? Almost there. That can, that can carry a lot of fuel. Bye bye, Orca. Abandon our poor little drones. Some drones are left without a controller after the rocket launch. Drones are lose their controller. They will look for a near, new controller nearby. However, when there are no controllers nearby, you only have to manually reassign them a new controller. So the reassign command allows you to reassign drones to understaffed controllers with heavy drone load. Reassign all. The RC transport is able to gather resources directly from surface deposits without the help of drones. Gather. Go on my drones. Not much going on. Okay, we 
got our five metal. Let's set up a small expand some distance away from the main base. We'll need resources for the new base. The RC transport can be ordered to transfer a large amount of resources in multiple goes via the create transport route command. The RC transport will automatically recharge itself if starting or ending point of the route is near a power network. Set a transport route between the universal storage of the base and a mark location above the base. I think I need this, and we're going to do this. And then unload. Nice work. Stock it up. Oh, we pretty much just got fuel. Commander, one other thing. The RC Rover is a mobile drone controller that carries its own drones. With its help, you can gather resources from surface deposits, construct and maintain buildings. By moving far distances, the RV RC Rover will first recall its drones before moving off to its destination. Move the RC rover to the site of the expand. Oh, there we go. That's the RC transport. There's the RC rover. We got an RC explorer. We need too. to construct a new sensor tower to scan the nearby environment. Okay. Sensor tower. Now we gotta build power cables. Oop. Cable fault reported. Good job. There we go. Now we're unloading more than just fuel. Underground rare metals. So they need colonists for that. Actual colonists, not... Make a metal thing. It's not gonna let me. I don't think it's gonna let me. No, it didn't tell me I could, so I can't. And we have power. It's time to learn about scanning sectors and exploration. You can scan new sectors to discover more resource deposits and anomalies. This is done in the map overview. Go to the map overview. You can scan sectors of the map to discover new resources and anomalies. Orbital probe. You can also queue sectors for scanning.
Well done. Now it's time to use our fully operational RC Explorer to analyze the anomaly. Select the RC Explorer and use the Move Interact button action in order to analyze the anomaly. This will take a while, so consider increasing the speed. Anomaly found. Good job. The RC Explorer is on its way to the anomaly. Wait for it to analyze the anomaly to continue. is analyzing what sort of anomaly could we find the anomaly has yielded interesting insights into new technologies researching new technologies unlocks new options for the colony such as new buildings domes and upgrades anomalies are often often provide bonuses to research. This is unlocking new technologies for research or providing research points. Open the research screen. We've got a research this screen. This is the research screen. From here, you can choose and queue text for research. Texts are divided into five basic fields and a field for special breakthroughs. Tech. Special breakthrough text. When you research a tech from a given basic field, you unlock a new tech in that field. Breakthrough texts are special unique texts that are unlocked via anomalies. Queue at least one technology for research. Mars crowdfunding, new. Subsurface heater, increases local temperature in cold areas. RC transports, harvest resources faster, and its maximum storage is increased by 15. Rockets and shuttles use less fuel. New spire building water reclamation system. Commander, one other thing. Each tech has a cost in research points, which are generated in various ways. Your sponsor provides some research points to start with. Once colonists arrive, you will be able to construct research labs, which will generate research points faster. You can view a breakdown of the research points generated per soul on the right side of the research screen. Close the research screen to complete this tutorial. So there's our, we can outsource it. There's our sponsor. Research for soul. 400 million in funding. We need a thousand. Nice work. Now you know how to handle rovers. Cool. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to command and use the various different rover vehicles at your disposal, as well as how to sand sectors and how to research new technologies. Power, water, and maintenance. <coughs> Welcome, <coughs> Commander. It looks like this forward base has gone through a major dust storm. Now it's your job to fix it up and prepare it for the first colonists. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to handle power, lives, support, grids, and building maintenance, as well as how to construct your first dome. First things first, let's remove some unnecessary structures. Concrete extractor has depleted its deposit. It will be of no use now. We can salvage some construction materials from it. Salvage the construction extractor. Boom. Now let's get that drone hub operational. We need to supply the drone hub with power. The resources from the salvage concrete extractor should be enough to construct a solar panel. It would be best to use the existing power cables connecting the two buildings to avoid wasting more metal on the cables. So we're going to build a large solar panel. Speed them up. Oh, our poor drones. Most of them are defunct. We have some power, but it's not enough. We should prioritize the drone hub. Change the priority of a building's manually. Buildings on higher priority get power maintenance workers first. So the drone hub to high priority. Drone hub, change priority. We can use the machine parts left from the concrete extractor to build a wind turbine. Wind turbines are a good alternative to solar panels as they operate day and night. They also get a bonus power production it built on high ground however wind turbines have high upkeep costs and require maintenance more often than solar panels 
That's okay, we're gonna build one anyway. The drone's gonna help each other get to the little pod. Even with the wind turbine, there won't be enough electricity to power the base, especially during the night. Solar panels provide power only during the day, but we don't have accumulators to compensate at night. We can set some of the base buildings to automatically turn off at night using building shifts. There are three shifts, first, second, first shift, second shift, and night shift. Buildings will require power, resources, and workers only during their active shift. Disable the night shifts on the moisture evaporator and fuel refinery. Night shift. Night you managed shift. to get things operational, but this won't last, as buildings require maintenance, and we are out of resources. Buildings require maintenance with resources roughly over six or seven souls. Buildings that don't get maintenance break and won't function until repaired. To showcase this, we have simulated breakdown of your solar panel. Drones will automatically repair this breakdown provided there are metals in range of their controller. Examine the broken down solar panel. Drone is on the way to repair the building. There he comes. There you are. We need more metals to secure this base. Use the RC transport to collect some metals and transport them back. The RC transport can mine service metals and gives it together 20 to 30 metals and bring it back to the base. You can then use these metals to set up additional solar panels and power up everything. Transport. There we go. Now just wait until it gets twenty metal. Just gotta tell it to do something. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there. Let's see if we can get it all the way to 30. Might save time later. full. Now let's move it over here. Oop. It's unloading. Now it is. Good job. However, we need more than just metals. Fortunately, we can call a resupply rocket from Earth. Using rockets to resupply from Earth is the best way to secure resources early on. You'll need funding to buy the resources, but your sponsor usually will provide you with enough to get a basic colony up and running. Open the resupply screen and order advanced resources from Earth. Cargo rocket. Polymers. 20 polymers. And 20 machine parts. 20 electronics. Let's do some cleaning up around the base while we wait for the rocket to arrive. The remains of destroyed or salvaged buildings will obstruct other constructions. To clear the ruins, you need to research the decommission protocol technology in the engineering field. Now, 
Let's remove some of the unnecessary cables. Use the salvage tools on the build menu to remove cables, pipes, as well as an alternative way to salvage buildings. Salvage tool? Salvage. Wait for the arrival of the rocket, then land it near the base. Remember, you can speed up time to land our orca. Our little robots are up and working. The supplies from Earth have arrived, and we can use them to expand the base. Let's start with a power accumulator, also probably known as a battery. It allows you to store power for nighttime and emergencies. Keep in mind that accumulators have a capped maximum output, so a single one might not be enough to power all buildings at night. Construct a power accumulator and connect it to the power grid. You may want to construct some additional solar panels and wind turbines in advance to sustain base expansion. Power accumulator. Here we go. There's one. I don't want to make more. Where are those guys going? Water is essential for a sustainable Martian colony. Fortunately, there is a water... Use the build menu to construct a water extractor near the water deposit. Then, power it up. Power cable... Are you the water Moisture. extractor is ready but we don't have a storage for the water it will extract we need water for domes farming and polymer production but for now we don't have any that will store some water in a water tower storages are important safety measures for your colonies they'll provide water oxygen or power in the case of production producer breaking down or ceasing operation during the disaster construct a water tower and connect it to the water extractor with pipes tower here and now we got to build water pipes well it's really funny about that Connect everything. The time has finally come to build the first dome that will house our colonists. Domes are large support structures that house colonists. You construct many buildings inside of domes. Some of them will require colonists as workforce. Domes have limited space but can be connected via passages to form larger systems. Remember to use the RC transport to mine metals. Call and resupply rockets if you need advanced resources to finish the dome. Construct a basic dome. Dome, dome, da dome, dome. Now we need power.
never got enough metal. Don't know that we have enough concrete. Can't build the concrete extractor. Hopefully we have enough. that off and then that will be enough metal done. Ten more concrete. And then we are fini. concrete got one. Oh, I got a bunch over there okay fair enough got plenty Done. we have an oxygen short the dome is complete but we have to supply it with water power and oxygen before we can use it. Domes require life support, namely water, power, and oxygen. Connect the dome to existing power, water infrastructures. You may need to build additional power producers. For oxygen, you need to construct a MOXIE, a device that extracts oxygen from the carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere. Once the MOXIE is ready and powered up, connect it to the dome with pipes. It would be wise to build oxygen storage as well. We have a power shortage. No, I want power first. I think we're going here. Water. We have a power shortage. Okay, so that needs power. And then I don't think we're going to be able to do that.
producing oxygen. It did say something about oxygen storage. Can't build a tank. Water tower. So we got oxygen, water, not enough power. So that is what we need is power. Build a solar panel. But we can build one of those. how much power negative 19 well done oh. you have completed the simulation successfully learn how to handle power water and oxygen as well as how a building maintenance works you're ready to set up a basic colony ready to accept the first pioneers on mars the next tutorial deals with colonists and their needs we'll continue it now or start a new game so let's do colonists we'll be so well Welcome informed back, commander in this tutorial, you will finally familiarize yourself with the challenges of sustaining a society on Mars. Everything done beforehand was a prelude to this very moment, the arrival of the Founders. Our first colonists are called the Founders. After they set fart on Mars, a trial period meant to test how humans fare on Mars will begin. No more colonists will arrive from Earth until the Founder stage ends. Be careful, if all your colonists die during this period, the mission will be terminated. Ooh, we don't want that, do we? Is that water? The well, foundations for bringing your first colonists have already been laid down. One what? of the final things left to do is to provide the founders with living space. Living quarters are built inside domes. Space within the dome is limited, so each building has to be carefully planned. Construct living quarters at the location indicated. Okay, so looks like it quarters it or sixes it up like a pie. Living quarters. Multiple accumulators, solar panels, wind. But we won't be able to build a concrete extractor to take advantage of this concrete. With all preparations complete, the colony is ready for the arrival of the founders. Order a passenger rocket. From this screen, you can inspect all available applicants and determine which ones will travel to the colony. Colonists are organized by their age, specialization, and various traits. You can set desired and undesired traits in every category using thumbs up and thumbs down. Colonists with more of the desired traits will board the rocket, while colonists with any desired un undesired traits will be rejected. other sex quirks guru tourist vegan no tourists lazy no chronic conditions no idiots no whiners no whiners on our colony watch Colonists will arrive on Mars with a small amount of food, 
but it will not last long. We need to make sure that they will be able to produce their own food on the Red Planet. The hydroponic farm can produce food. Although the colonists can take food directly from a food depot, they will be happier if they can pick it up from a grocery. Start the hydroponic farm in a grocer inside your dome. Life support. Hydroponic farm. Guess we get one. Yeah, all we're going to get in there is one. And a grocer. Probably could have got that better positioned. The grocer seems to be better placed. Colonists need service buildings to keep them comfortable on Mars. The grocery that you already constructed is one such service building. Different services satisfy different interests colonists may have. The colonist may feel more comfortable inside a dome which has his interests covered. But you don't need to cover every interest. In a smaller dome, this might not even be possible. If the comfort of colonists falls too low, they may become Earth-sick and decide to leave Mars and go back to Earth. Ah, that assumes I'm going to send a rocket. However, Martian-born colonists will never get Earth-sick. Construct a space bar inside the dome. We're going to construct an any key as well. Wow, that is... Can I turn it? Oh, R and T. Space bar. I like how they have to go in and out of the airlock, too. That's pretty cool. And they can pick other airlocks. Kind of neat. Kellogg 1. Space bar. Wait for the passenger rocket to arrive, then land it near the dome. Is that near enough? Full of hope and determination, the first founders have set foot on the Red Planet. next 10 souls will be full of difficulties and dangers, but also with great promises and opportunity. It is now to us to prove that Mars can be a doorway to greater riches and the future of human civilization. Even the most epic adventures begin with a single step. The arrival of additional colonists temporarily suspended until the colony proves able to sustain human life. Your founder colonists must su survive for 10 souls before additional people can arrive. The colony will be evaluated positively before the period ends. In the event the first human is born on Mars. If you feel you're up to the challenge, try constructing a medical building and raising the comfort of founders as much as possible with service buildings. Okay, let's build a medical building. New colonists have arrived. Where is the medical building? Great. Now that you have a space bar, you can customize its work settings. Founders have just arrived, have taken available jobs automatically, you can customize their work assignments. With the building select, you'll notice three available work shifts in the panel. Two of them are active, with two workers employed at each shift. The more workers assigned to a building, the better the building performs. Initially, however, we won't be needing so many people working at the space bar, as there will be other important jobs to fill and limited people to fill them, especially during the founder stage. Save a one job slot in every active shift. So job slots. Where was that? Was that under? Job slots. Is 
Select the space bar. There we go. Okay, two times. All right. Healthy colonists at working age are able to fill any position, but how well they perform at a certain position varies between colonists. Some buildings are more effective with workers with certain specialization. For example, scientists are best workers in a research lab. Construct a research lab inside the dome. Research lab. Look at all them drones. Look at Dronanza. They still didn't get it done. To make another trip. very far there we go now we're making some progress research drone research lab away work shifts among other things are a way to manage your workforce the more shifts a building has open the more colonists it will attract to work there colonists don't like to work at night and will lose sanity while doing so furthermore you may activate the heavy workload option which boosts the performance of a building during that shift, but inflicts sanity and health problems on the workers due to increased stress at their job. With the research lab selected, activate the second work shift. Buildings with higher priority will be allocated workers, power, and maintenance before others. Okay, let's prioritize the research lab. With the research lab up and running, let's begin researching some technologies. The research screen, queue up at least three of the available technologies. Crown funding, systematic. Scientists botanists have plus ten performance in working in their specialty. Productivity training. Engineers and geologists. Live from Mars. More applicants will start to appear on Earth. Don't need that. Surface heating. Oji turbines. Power production increased by thirty three percent. Sensors no longer require power or maintenance. That sounds useful. Extractor amplification. Use increased production by 25%. More power. Probes are cheaper and can deep scan. Rockets and sh shuttles require less fuel. Water reclamation. New spire building water reclamation system. Drastically reduces water consumption inside the drone. Okay. What does Rob? Congratulations. Run. You have provided everything needed for a successful founder stage. Founder stage takes 10 souls to complete. Be careful if all your colonists die during this period, the mission will be terminated. Having a baby born on Mars before the end of the period will also complete the founder stage. This happens if the comfort of your colonists is very high. We build you have a... completed the tutorial for the founder stage. Mo 
multiple domes. Let's try this one. Welcome back, Commander. In this tutorial, you will manage a larger colony that consists of multiple domes. So you expand your base, try to obtain various resources scattered across the map. You will inevitably end up with a colony that consists of several domes. This tutorial will introduce you to a lot of typical situations you can expect to come up in big colony. Okay, so we got a dome, we got some stuff. Shuttles can transport resources and colonists across great distances. Complex technology new for shuttle flying in thin marsh atmosphere typically must be researched. For purposes of the tutorial, it's been granted. Construct a shuttle hub. And connect it to the power grid. Quarters, hydroponic farm, firmery, alleys, grocer, research lab. There we go. Now that we have operational shuttles, it's time to establish a mining dome. Connors can work. In some outside buildings placed close to their domes, such as extractors for metals and rare objects, rare metals. Since colonists will need to will be needed for the extraction process of these underground minerals, it's a good idea to place good practice to place domes near such deposits in, as is the case in this simulation. Construct a rare metals extractor next to the rare metals deposit and connect it to power using the power grid. Rare metals extractor. to the people where are my power where are my power at okay that works shuttles down here there are no colonists in the mining dome we must provide living space for the colonists so they can move there okay need living space don't forget to provide basic services for the citizens of your new dome. Space bar, of course. I need a grocer. We'll let it finish these at least. There goes the shuttle. Zoom. They just go down there and pick people up. And where do they take them? Straight to the shuttle. Or straight to the dome. And they just zoom on over. And start working. Everything's better with robots. You can set up filters for every dome to attract colonists with desired traits. 
and block or push out colonists with undesired ones. Filter Being near a rare metals deposit, this dome is best suited as a mining hub. So it's best to encourage geologists to migrate here. Why? Because we want to make sure that the research dome gets all the available scientists. Or ban scientists. Specialization. Okay. Thumbs up for geologists, thumbs down for scientists. This dome has been designated for research purposes, so it's best to attract more colonists with the scientist specialization. So we're going to just reverse it. Colonists can migrate between domes using shuttles or walking when they are positioned close to one another. However, they cannot usually visit buildings in nearby domes on a daily basis unless they are connected to their own dome. To demonstrate drone connections, let's build a new dome near our research dome. I hear you like dromes, so I built a drome in your dome in your dome. Cable fault reported. Do it. Can I build a dome to dome connection? Do domes give me that ability? Passage. from there to there. Building not working. No research project. It's okay, I can't do anything. Construct two farms in the new dome. They will be used as workplaces for the colonists in the old dome once the domes are connected. All farmed up. Domes positioned closely to each other may be connected with passages. That's what I thought. Okay, so you build them inside, they're not like the airlocks. Must start in and go to, within the dome. And domes are built by, or uh, passages are built by concrete. Okay. 
making progress. I guess I did not have to build water and power to this because now they'll share. But it's good Careful backup, I guess. Reported. Good job. Now that the two domes are connected, colonists from the first can start working on the newly built farms in the third dome. The passenger also connect the two domes to the person distributing power, water, and oxygen. Right, we have a cable fault. Oh, they're fixing it? Okay. Section of the grid has malfunctioned is now Some leaking. Some buildings can have upgrades that can improve them in various ways. Research the extractor amplifier tech from the research screen. He's working on it. Fixed. No, he's still working on it. Got a lot of resources stored up. Too bad the waste rock can't be used for anything. I'm sure maybe it can. No. Congratulations. With the research complete, a new upgrade for your extractors is now available. It is not automatically activated in your buildings. You must construct it first. Select the water extractor, then select the indicated upgrade. No. Yeah, nice work. The upgrade has been constructed. Some upgrades will consume more power or water while active. When after an upgrade has been constructed, it may be turned on or off with the same button that was used for its construction. The command center is a treasure trove of information about the colony. It offers historical data for various colony metrics as well as overview of domes, buildings, colonists, and transportation. Open the command center and try it out. Graphs. Colonists. Drones. Constructions. Stored power. Stored oxygen. Stored water. Stockpile metals. Concrete. Food. Rare metals are growing. Polymers are decreasing. That is a lot of data. Congratulations, Commander. You have graduated from the International Mars Mission Training Simulation. Team at Mission Control is eager to meet you and serve under your command. The challenge of conquering Mars for the sake of humankind is still a tough one. But with a commander as skillful and resourceful as you, the task seems a bit easier now. The colonization of Mars awaits. Good luck, Commander, and may the cosmos be with you. So that is the tutorial. So that is for today. We're going to get into it and play through a mission, I guess, and see how that works. But now we know the basics. Anyway, that is Surviving Mars tutorial. Now we'll start on Surviving Mars, the actual game. Hope you stay tuned for that. It'll be on tomorrow. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.